Hello, everybody. Welcome. This, you know, this is beautiful to see this many, this many people in this dining room. You remember we come here recently and we only have about 10, 15, 20 people. And to see this many people sitting down enjoying themselves in this dining room, isn't it marvelous? Oh, my goodness, yes. Well, thank you so very much for coming today to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the Glen, our home. 20 years of service, dedicated service and progress is not an easy task. And we all know that it just doesn't happen. It takes a lot of dedicated men and women to make this happen. But we have a lot of great leadership here at the staff and on our board. We have two members here on our board that make sure this community thrives. As I said, we have two dedicated board members with us today, and I'd like to introduce them first. The board member, uh, the president of the board is Mary Farr, and I'm going to ask her to come up and say a few words and then introduce Carol Merchant and her service for the last 20 years. Mary? Thank you, Bobby. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our 20th year celebration. This is an exciting time for us as we celebrate 20 years of being in service, the next phase of our new apartments, and the memory care center. I was surprised to see all the dirt when I pulled up today. I, was, I personally was not on the board when we opened, but we do have a board member here, Carol Merchant, that was. In 1996, Carol was on the original Oversight Committee, which facilitated the development of the Glen. She represents the Conkling Board, formerly known to some of you as the Glens Falls Home, which also is a partner that owns the Glen. Carol has been very instrumental with all aspects of the Glen. She's a retired broker, but her current occupation is decorating the Memory Center. <laughs> Seriously, she's a very dedicated individual who passionately serves as a role as a board member. As you may be aware, she's also co-chair of the fundraising committee for the Memory Center. We are very fortunate to have someone as passionate and dedicated as Carol is. And we can only hope that she continues for another 20 years, perhaps as a resident. <laughs> Please join me in thanking Carol for her service and dedication. Thank you. You want to stand here? And Carol, we're going to ask you. Are you? Did you make a note to accept this? Yes, no? so oh, you are so good. <laughs> I'll hold your power. Okay. Yes, please. <laughs> Thank you. Today is really special to me because I was on the board of the Glens Falls Home when we decided that the home no longer served uh, its original intent. Actually, what drove our decision to try to build a new home was that the ladies, and I say, excuse me, the ladies, we had no men, <laughs> uh, had to share bathrooms, and that was not working very well. We were losing <laughs> we were losing potential uh, residents because we didn't have uh, private bathrooms. So that was what actually what drove the search to build a new adult home, which today wouldn't be called an adult home. I guess it would be an assisted living or a rich housing or whatever uh, no, nomenclature goes with it. But at any rate, we decided that we wanted to build a new adult home. And then we started doing the research and discovered that there were more needs than just the adult home. In the community, there were uh, senior independent living for low-income people, mainly because the government had subsidized it. But we were losing residents uh, from our community that wanted that type of living, and they had to leave and go to other cities, towns, and because there wasn't anything in Glens Falls. So we started thinking that we wanted to build more than an adult home. We wanted to build a senior community. 
And so we started doing our research, and we found that the Eddy at that time had a consulting firm was part of one of their many hats. And so we hired them to advise us. And then one fine day where we weren't very far into it, they came to us and they said, how would you like us to partner with you on this? Well, it was eureka because we didn't really know what we were doing. And the Eddie had a great reputation and they had the experience that we didn't have. So there came the... Uh, marriage of the two uh, to the Glens Falls home and the Yeti. Uh, the first thing that went wrong was <laughs> we had identified this land is where we wanted to put the facility. We had looked, we wanted to be in Glens Falls, but there just wasn't enough land available or in at least in any area that we wouldn't want to put the facility. So in any event, uh, the developer of this whole project, this whole land, the Highland, had gone into bankruptcy, and it was the uh, land was then held by one of the local banks. So we negotiated with the bank and made a great deal that we were going to buy um, the property here. And the only thing we had left to do was go to a closing because we had agreed on everything. And one fine morning, we woke up and read the post star, and it said they had sold the whole, whole, whole piece of property to an outside company. Needless to say, we were just furious. But all was not lost because we ended up negotiating with the new owner. We didn't get such a good deal, but we did get the land. But that was our first setback, and we got through it. Um, the marriage with the Yeti wasn't always made in heaven. It was, uh, we were two different cultures. At the Glens Falls home, the board was a total hands-on. We made all the decisions, and I mean all the decisions. I can remember a discussion about how the toast should be. Should it, it was, too, it, was it too dark? Was it too light? I mean, we made all the decisions. And so we thought we'd do the same thing when we coupled up with the Yeti. They, you know, we were, we were caregivers. They were business people. So we finally did work out our differences. <laughs> The, one of the funny things that happened, I mean, we probably were all on edge by we worked on this project like forever. And we were kind of on edge, and it was finally time the residents were, uh, we transitioned all the Glens Falls home ladies to uh, the terrace here. And it, I don't even know how this came up, but we discovered that there was no toilet paper in the bathrooms. And we said, where's the toilet paper? And they said, the residents have to buy their own toilet paper. And we were shocked. We said, no, that's something we have to supply. Well, I don't know why, but the Eddie went to the mat and we went to the mat. And we were not going to make our residents buy their own toilet paper. And, and I'm not exaggerating. This really happened. And so finally, I don't even know how this happened, but Scott Paper Company got wind of it. And they sent huge crates of toilet paper so that nobody had to buy the toilet paper. And the residents moved in, and hopefully they've been living happily ever after. I hope you're all happy here. This was how we visualized this would happen. And it's, I'm just so pleased, and here it is 20 years and fortunately, I haven't aged a bit in that time. <laughs> but but I'm, I'm still delighted to be on both boards, which is now the Conkling Center and this board. And I really appreciate everyone coming today to celebrate this fine time. Thank you. Fabulous, fabulous. Thank you very much, Mary and Carol. Since being on the campaign committee, I have learned to love these two girls so much. They are terrific. Even if sometimes they throw me under the bus occasionally. But they're, they're great people. They're so dedicated. And let me tell you, we are very fortunate to have them on our board. Look it out for our interest. So if you don't know them, Please introduce yourself to them before the end of the today.
I don't know how many of you have read the plaque that's in the exit as you exit the building, but there's a big plaque up there that commemorates the uh, building of this uh, community, October the 10th, 2001. And on that plaque, there's two names that I want to talk about briefly. One is Carl, and we just heard from her and how fabulous she is and all, all the things she's done for us. The other one is uh, my neighbor, I hope I don't embarrass him, Richard Parker. Dick Parker, who was on the board of uh, both the Glens Falls Home and was the, on the board of the charter for this organization, the Glen. Right? Am I right, ladies? Thank you. Keep it straight. <laughs> but as an architect, Dick, I am sure that you will value input in the building of this uh, uh, unit or this uh, community 20 years ago had a lot to do with where we are today. And we thank you, Dick, for your participation in that. And today I found out about another resident who, unfortunately, because of medical uh, situation, has been in and out of our community, back to rehab and so forth. Her name is Cindy Hess. If you don't know her, you should know her. She lives in the cottage, and she was on the board of directors of the Glen Falls Homes, right? And she was on some of the committees originally to do feasibility studies to as they built this community. So, Cindy, sorry you're not with us, but we do appreciate you, don't we? Yes. So, I'm sure many of you have heard Jenny and I talk a number of different times as to why we came to the Glen four years ago. Well, one of the reasons, of course there were a number, but one of the reasons is sitting right out in front of me. <laughs> is you people, I love you. You make living much more enjoyable. And I'm so happy to be here with this group of residents and have such a, a great community. But we have two special ladies tonight, today that we want to talk about, just very briefly. And that's Phyllis Deerstein, sitting next to my lovely wife. Phyllis is one of the charter members, or one of the first ones that moved into the community 20 years ago. Okay? You may not know her well because she lives in the cottage, and of course I know we get, uh, uh, you don't think of us sometimes as part of the group because we live down there. <laughs> but really, we are. We love you. We're part of you. But Phyllis, you know, is at uh, over 100, I think 102. 102. 102. Doesn't get out as much as she used to, as you might well expect. So that's one, one of the reasons maybe you haven't seen her recently. But take time today to say thank you, Phyllis. We appreciate you. And all the best. Uh, Phyllis was born in Gary, Indiana, and grew up in Illinois. She attended Baylor College in Wisconsin and received a BA uh, in English. She is a saint, a.k.a. teacher. <laughs> she taught first grade and kindergarten in several different schools. So, thank you so very much, Phyllis. Lost my speech. <laughs> okay. Now, everybody knows Betty Dodds, right? Yeah. yeah, of course you do. She's always around and so personable, always willing to chat with you. Um, Betty, it seems, has always been interested in photography. Well, why not? She was born in Seoul, Korea. She's been all over the world, and so she's had some fantastic places and people to photograph. And I know Betty has had at least four or five special shows here in the area. In fact, I think she had one here before we came. But anyway, she's a photographer and a, a very good one at that. So 
If you have been or are interested in photography, you remember converting from film-based camera to digital camera, right? And there's some difficulties. Well, when Betty was telling me several years ago how when she was converting to digital, how this gentleman was telling her how to use some of the menu items. And he said, this delete button is for all the mistakes you make. And Betty said, I don't make mistakes. <laughs> and oh, by the way, Betty is a saint also. She taught high school history, government, and social studies. Thank you for being with us, being with us today, Betty. We appreciate you so much. It's interesting to note that there are five other residents here who've been here between 15 and 18 years. Quite interesting. Five others. I'm looking at one right now, but I'm not going to call a name. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'd just like to take another moment to thank Tom Ryan for the donation of all those beautiful artwork you see outside. And they're going to be on display for the next week. We're going to be having visitors coming in, hopefully, to view these. But when they do come in, they're going to be adhering to our protocols and they will always be with a guide, either someone from the campaign committee or staff to take them around. The paintings are up now and they're going to be av they're available on the website as, as of right now. And the website will be open for auction effective 4 o'clock today. So get in and start throwing the money. <laughs> the beautiful thing about this is all of the money from this artwork, over 60 paintings, will be donated to the memory care unit. Thank you so much, Tom. Now, this is important. Pay attention. <laughs> the website is up, and to get to the website, you go to glenhighland.com slash RSVP. You don't have to remember this because there's a big sign right out by the French toast today. You remember when you had French toast? Right by the French toast on the line. There was a big sign that tells you how to do it, but I'm going to tell you anyway how to do it. And then when you get to there, click on register and then follow the instructions. Now, if you're going to use a mobile device, no, nah, not a smartphone necessary. Oh, not necessary was my good friend, Corey. An Apple. An, I, an Apple. <laughs> but if you're using a smart device, be sure to download the app, which is G-I-V-I. Okay. So if you need any instructions as to how to get in, please ask us. Cheryl is standing right back there, is the expert. That's the one you want to talk to. She's the one that put that sign out there and she'll be most happy to help you get started. But I'm looking forward to a very, very successful auction and to raise a lot of money for our memory care unit. So again, thanks Tom. And Thanks to everyone for coming, and I want to turn the program over to now to Andrea, the boss. <laughs> all right. I think all of you are the bosses, actually, but um, thank you, Bobby, so much. I want to personally thank Carol, Mary, and the entire board of directors at the Glen. I was fortunate enough to be part of the project team as finance director back then in 1996, um, when the Glen was in development. And I've worked with Carol and the Glen's board um, in that role long before I was director here. I can tell you they've been unwavering, and as Bobby indicated, in their commitment to residents and staff and making the Glen, making sure the Glen remains a wonderful place to live and work today and into the future. The next 20 years, maybe. <laughs> the board has also been extremely supportive to me, providing guidance and direction over the years, so thank you. 
The Glen is made special by our residents, as Bobby indicated. A wonderful mix of personalities, backgrounds, experiences that all blend together for a wonderful, caring community. In addition to those that Bobby honored today, there are many residents with us who've been made their Glen their home for 10, 15 years plus, and all residents give back in their own ways to the Glen and to each other. This is a family. Also, a special thank you to those who have served on the, or those who have served and currently serve on the Glen's Resident Advisory Council and who've helped with the Staff Appreciation Fund over the years. I know Bobby has thanked Tom Ryan and others who've given their time, talents, and money to our new memory care center. Um, I also want to give a special thanks to Frank and Lois Schaefer, who are back there and have um, been very generous contributors to the memory care campaign. But I also have to thank Bobby and his lovely wife, Jenny. They've given back probably in more ways than I'm even aware of. Um, Bobby has been our resident council president, is still assisting with the staff appreciation fund accounting, I understand, um, co-chair of our capital campaign committee for the memory care center, and of course is our MC today. Um, and Jenny is our honorary marketing person many times <laughs> over, um, as well as just helpful. She helped get um, Phyllis up here to this ceremony today, which we are so happy to have. So thank you, Bobby and Jenny. And of course, nothing at the Glen would continue to exist at all without our amazing team of staff who are scattered throughout, I think, um, led by our amazing leadership team, who are also scattered throughout. Um, as I've heard from many residents, the Glen staff are part of the family too. This past year and a half, I've seen more dedication from staff than I ever could have imagined or asked for. As you are well aware, the pande pandemic has necessitated change after change after change. And these ch changes were difficult for residents. I, I know that in my heart. They were also very difficult for staff, especially since most of them um, had, at least initially, had to be done very, very quickly. Wearing masks continuously, sanitizing everything, um, additional security to ensure people screen and temp at the door appropriately, delivery of dining service changes over and over again, activities going virtual and remote and then back in person with all kinds of safety measures, care staff providing personal care to our residents with all kinds of new restrictions and, and changes, and even just showing up to work every day in an environment where they come in contact with a lot of people. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Today, yes. Today we honor three people who have worked at the Glen since it opened. In fact, they all worked at the Glen's Falls home and chose to transfer here to the Glen and Highland Meadows when the residents did. And I have to say um, another thing that all three of these people have in common is their positive attitudes. We have all been blessed uh, to be recipients of their positive energy and giving nature. So first, Terry Meany, housekeeping supervisor. I don't think everybody can see you, Terry, but she's around the corner there. <laughs> she has done and seen it all. And it still amazes me. She knows residents' names, and the associated apartment numbers by heart. Whenever we need to know something, we ask Terry. Um, and Lori Schlake has been our care staff team member since we opened and works what I consider to be probably the most difficult shift, the night shift. Um, she wasn't able to be with us today because she is sleeping, um, but she is so caring, always smiling, even first thing in the morning when she's on her way out and everybody else is on their way in. And Brian Abair, who came over from the Glens Falls home as a maintenance staff person. And then although he left us for a number of years, we forgive him because he decided to come back. <laughs> We're so happy he came back so we can hear his cheery good morning every morning. Thank you all for your excellent service to our residents all these years, but more than that, your dedication and caring and your positivity. So thank you.
So I am going to put this back on. I am going to ask dining staff maybe to start pouring for toast. Yes? No? Maybe? <laughs> yes, you may. And I'm going to hand out some more flowers. My other boss, President Farr, <laughs> asked me to remind each of you that when you go on an auction and buy a painting, you can buy it for the memory center. I know a lot of us don't have a lot of space in our in our apartments, and I am wondering how many paintings I can buy and put in our apartment. I have some negotiating with Jenny. But if you want to buy a painting and put it in the memory care unit as a donation for you, from you, this is acceptable. Right, boss? Yes, thank you. All right. That's a good idea. Good idea. Breaking down, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, we are pouring and we'll be distributing, so bear with us while we do that and wait for the culminating toast. How's that? Um, while we do that, sorry. Um, while they're pouring, I did want to note that we have some very special gifts for all of you. So I'm going to go get a sample, and I'll be right back. I think everybody's been scoping these out already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have one of these? All right, so we have packages of note cards that Cheryl single-handedly packaged and tied notes around, but they are samples of the lovely work that Tom Ryan has done, printed on note cards. So this is our 20th anniversary gift to all of you. Um, so they are on the desk as you leave. Please grab one. Um, we will be also making sure that residents have these who have not been able to attend today. Um, there's also 20th anniversary bags on the chair next to the desk. I know Cheryl's planning on kind of staking that out and making sure that everyone gets one on their way out. So please help yourself. And thank you. These are lovely. Thank you. Good job, Cheryl. I know. But you're not alone. For those of you who didn't hear, Cheryl was watching the Yankees lose last night while making all these. Um. So they might be messed up, right? <laughs> yes, if you have some repeats or whatever, that could be why. You know, bad play, maybe. But. All right. And. Um, so if anyone needs help, if anyone doesn't really have a computer, mobile device, just pass this around. If you'd like to still bid, then we're able to call Cheryl. Um, we'll have some help for Cheryl, too. Um, she could make your bid for you. <laughs> so, and one other thing to note, there's a... So board members, whoever would like to, there's a really lovely picture there of the Glen that would be really nice on a wall here in the Glen. If anyone wants to purchase it and then donate it back, never know. Um, but it is a good point. I have heard from a couple of residents that we don't have any room on our walls. Um, keep in mind that we do have a lot of wall space at the new Memory Care Center. We even have some wall space here in the building. So if you'd like to just help with giving, please feel free to bid on items. And if you win it, you can donate it back to the Glen so you can see it every day or to the new Memory Care Center to help decorate the new Memory Care yes. Center. So another idea. And you get a full taxable deduction if you donate it back. <laughs> Speaking as a fun fundraising person, full taxable donation if you donate it back. 
All right, I think we're almost ready, maybe. Okay, I'm not drinking on the job. I'm just going to raise my glass. Okay. Oh, we need one more. Okay, sorry. False alarm. Two more. Um, so, <laughs> when the traffic stops, maybe Bobby and Mary and Carol could come up and join me. Would you like to make the jokes? You're doing great. You're doing great. Oh, Carol's right behind you. Right in the middle, Carol. Come here, baby. All right, everybody's ready, right? Yeah. All right, please raise your glass to another 20 years at the Glenet Highland Meadows. Thank you, everyone. Here, here. here, here.